With Mary's fiat agreeing to become the mother of Jesus, she is literally taking her life in her hands. Having a child outside of marriage at this time was illegal and punishable by death. So Joseph is faced with a very important decision. Continue with his engagement to Mary, literally saving her life, or call off the engagement and basically condemn her and her unborn child to death. There's no doubt that Joseph plays a pivotal role in the gospel story, but there seem to be a lot of questions that are still unanswered about Joseph. First, how old was he exactly? Sources vary about his actual age, but the general consensus seems to be that he was older than Mary, maybe much older than Mary. Um, although marriage of an older man to a younger woman would have been normal at the time, it does seem kind of creepy to us, and it's worth investigating. Another question that looms over this holy family image that we have is that the church has always taught that Joseph and Mary never had any other children besides Jesus. In fact, the church teaches that Joseph and Mary never even had sex, even after the birth of Jesus. It's a weird thing for the church to teach, and it might be a very hard thing for us to believe, perhaps the hardest thing for us to believe. Now, before we begin to answer these questions, we first need to make them a little bit more complicated. See, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, and the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, we have references to the quote-unquote brothers of Jesus, perhaps brothers and sisters of Jesus. See, the Gospels that were originally written in Greek use the Greek word adelphoi, or adelphos, to refer to Jesus' brothers and sisters. Now the first obvious question when we hear this is, if Joseph and Mary supposedly never had sex even after the birth of Jesus, where did these other brothers and sisters come from? One answer proposed to answer these questions is that the Greek word adelphoi and similar translations in the Hebrew not only means brothers or brothers and sisters, but it can also mean kinsmen or clansmen, even cousins. So there's a chance when these brothers of Jesus are named that they are actually referring to his cousins or just his neighbors, people in the town that he lived in. It's possible they weren't related to him at all. But that answer doesn't seem to convince a lot of people, and I think we have a much more convincing answer to this question found in a book called The Proto-Evangelium of James. The Proto-Evangelium, or Pre-Gospel, of James is supposedly written by James, the brother, the Adelphoi, of Jesus, which would answer a whole lot of questions if that was true. Jesus' brother, if he had a brother, would be the one to know the answers to these questions. And as it turns out, the pre-gospel of James is all about the story of Mary and Joseph and how they got together. Now, you may be wondering why this isn't in the Bible. Is this some sort of cover-up, some sort of conspiracy? And of course, there are a lot of theories that would point in that direction. But the reality is, the reason we didn't include the pre-gospel of James in the Bible is because it doesn't have anything to do with Jesus. It's all about Joseph and Mary and their relationship. And when the apostles were putting the Bible together, they wanted to keep the Bible only about Jesus and his teachings. So what does this gospel of James have to do... <clears throat> so what does this pre-gospel of James have to say on the question of Joseph, his age, and his children that he may or may not have with Mary? Unfortunately, and I hate to shatter this perfect image we seem to have of the Holy Family, Joseph and Mary around the same age, in love, um, having this one baby, Jesus, that they would care for and raise together as their own. I hate to shatter that image, but the Gospel of James seems to indicate that that was not the relationship uh, that iconography and recent films seems to depict it as. In fact, the Proto-Evangelium of James confirms that Joseph was much older than Mary, which historians have always suggested, but it also gives a valid reason for their marriage. See, Mary, according to this, <clears throat> Mary, according to James, uh, was a consecrated temple virgin, which was basically the historical equivalent of our modern day nuns. She would have lived and worked in the temple. But the problem with this time period is that women don't actually have any rights of their own. They can't own property, they can't own money, they're not even allowed out in public sometimes without male escorts, 
It's a really hard time to be a woman, and I apologize on behalf of my gender for history. The unfortunate reality is, if a woman wanted to have an independent career like a temple virgin, which James tells us Mary was, she needed to have at least a legally binding marriage contract. Now this doesn't mean that she was actually getting married to another man, it just means that on paper she needs to be associated with another man in order to be able to own property and money and, and so forth. So the common practice in the temple was for the temple virgins to be quote unquote married to a, a, a man. Now this was never going to be a marriage like you would think of typical marriages, i.e. with physical intimacy, romance, having children, that sort of thing. This was a marriage simply to justify a woman having a, basically a job and a life of her own. So usually the men chosen for this role would be uh, widower, widowers or older men who had basically already lived their lives and were retired and would serve as the husband in name only. And that seems to be the relationship between Mary and Joseph. According to the Proto-Evangelium of James, Mary was a temple virgin and her quote-unquote husband was selected from a pool of um, possible candidates and uh, Joseph was chosen. And according to all accounts, he didn't actually even want the job. He had been married already, he already had children, one of whom was James, who was the writer of this document, and Joseph didn't seem to really want to be involved with this extra responsibility. Uh, but in the end, he realized the importance of it and agreed. And what we end up with is a relationship not like the movies show, where you have a young Mary and a young Joseph that seem to be in love with each other, but rather a relationship that is born out of necessity for a younger girl, Mary, who's about 14 years old, working in the temple, who needed a sort of um, male guardian figure that, legally speaking, would be called her husband, but in actuality would be something more like a, a legal guardian. Although this relationship might seem creepy to us, it was pretty normal at the time, and even though Joseph was much older than Mary, it wasn't like they were actually living as husband and wife. Secondly, this explains why the church has always taught that Mary and Joseph never had sex, because they weren't supposed to, they weren't allowed to, and even if they were, Joseph wasn't really interested in this relationship in the first place, he was doing it just as his civic duty. And finally, it explains where these Adelphoi, the brothers and sisters of Jesus, came from. Joseph had a previous wife who had died. They had children together. Jesus probably would have grown up with bro older brothers and sisters, including James. So what do you think? Does this answer all the conspiracy theories surrounding Joseph and Mary's relationship? Are there any other questions that are hanging in the air? Let me know by submitting a question at frogquestions.com. You can send an email at frogquestions at gmail.com, or you can simply leave a comment down below.